Firefighters in View Royal are celebrating tonight after the municipality voted in favor of replacing the old fire hall with a new public safety building. More than 2,600 people cast a ballot in the referendum asking if the town of View Royal should borrow close to five and a half million dollars to build a new hall to replace the aging structure on the island highway. Close to 1,700 people voted yes for a new building and more than 900 said no. The mayor says the decision is good for the community. Almost two-thirds of the people who voted yesterday uh, spoke um, in effect with their wallets. A referendum of this kind is an ask for approval to spend their money. The largest turnout that I've ever experienced of people uh, coming in to say this is what they wanted. The mayor says the next step is choosing a design for the new building. If all goes as planned, construction should be complete by 2014. Well, tomorrow is voting day if you live in the federal Victoria riding. More than 88,000 people are eligible to cast a ballot in the by-election and send a new MP to Ottawa. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. NDP candidate Murray Rankin is seen as the front runner, but recent polls show the Green Party's Donald Galloway is gaining ground. Liberal Paul Somerville is hopeful his one-issue sewage treatment campaign will send him to Ottawa. The Conservative Party's Dale Gann has been trailing in the polls, but he remains hopeful he will soon be working with the Prime Minister, Stephen Harper. The winner will replace NDP MP Denis Savoie, who stepped down at the end of August over health concerns. Victoria is one of three federal ridings heading to the polls tomorrow. Calgary Centre and Ontario's Durham ridings are also up for grabs. The family of a man shot and killed in a botched robbery attempt in 2010 is breathing a sigh of relief after a jury found two men guilty for his death. A B.C. Supreme Court jury has found Andrew Belcourt guilty of second-degree murder and co-accused Samuel McGrath guilty of manslaughter in the death of 52-year-old Leslie Hankel. Hankel died instantly when he was shot in the head during a botched robbery at his Fernwood apartment in March of 2010. The accused went to the apartment thinking they would find money and marijuana. During the trial, Belcourt testified McGrath was not in the room when he fired the shotgun and says he did not mean to kill Hankel. Both men will be sentenced Wednesday. Well, it's been five days since the water main burst in Oak Bay, flooding more than a dozen homes on Bowker Avenue. Some people living on the street are still trying to dry out their homes and their belongings. Tuesday's devastating flood caused hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. Homeowners say they are slowly trying to piece their lives back together. But there are still questions being raised about why it took so long to turn off the water and who will be picking up the bill for the damage. It's been really challenging. We still do not have a place to live for the next two months while they finish off the the repairs to the house. But we're also really, really frustrated because we haven't heard um, anything from the municipality about how they're going to fix this. We've been staying at a hotel downtown uh, until today. Um, today we have to move to another hotel. Uh, we'll be there for um, another few days and then we really are trying to find a long-term home to live in. A group of homeowners are planning to attend Oak Bay's council meeting tomorrow night to voice their concerns. Hundreds of people lined the streets of Sydney for the town's annual Santa Claus parade last night. Sydney was all sparkles as floats, bands and participants made their way down Beacon Avenue. But it was jolly old St. Nick who most of them here wanted to see with wish lists waiting. A monster truck. <laughs> An Xbox 360. Um, laptop. Um, an iPod. I don't know, like Lego or something. Just like a cooking set and a dog. Parents say the event is the perfect way to start off the holiday season. The annual parade is organized by the Peninsula Celebration Society. Well, Santa must have worked up quite the appetite in Sydney last night. He was on the Mid-Island this morning for a big pancake breakfast. Hundreds of people were at Country Club Centre bright and early to meet the man in the big red suit. Children of all ages had the chance to do some crafts and fill up with a tasty breakfast. This is the seventh annual event raising money for the Nanaimo Child Development Centre. 
Health Development Center is 326 children on the wait list right now, waiting up to nine months for services. So this kind of fundraiser is, means so much to us at the center. Uh, we are a not-for-profit not society, and thus fundraised dollars are so vitally important. And this is an obviously a wonderful way for families to come out and support us, as well as having a great time. Each year, the breakfast raises about $3,000 for the nonprofit. Since 2005, about $20,000 has been raised. Christmas, or at least Christmas dinner, came early today for more than 600 people thanks to the Mustard Seed Food Bank's 25th annual Christmas dinner. Volunteers have been preparing for the massive feast for days. 28 sponsors donated every last item required to make the dinner possible, from the venue, the Bay Street Armory, to the entertainment, and most importantly, all that food. We got 600 pounds of turkey, 250 pounds of potatoes, and 70 loaves of bread to turn into stuffing. Uh, 100 liters of gravy this year. Oh, I think it means a lot to all the volunteers that show up to help out. Um, it's a good feeling to come out and do something like this for such a worthy cause. Last year, more than 700 people took part. The Mustard Seed says more and more people are relying on its services every year, and dinners such as this mean a lot to the community. The numbers have been consistent uh, over the years, and, and this year, in the last two years, the Bay Street Armories, they looked at uh, the crowd we had in here, which was a thousand people at one time, and thought, you know, that's too many people in the armory, so they've uh, scaled it back, so we can only have 600 people in here. So we've gone the maximum, we've uh, issued tickets for it, of course the tickets are free, and uh, the people that have, uh, that's been sold out for about a week now, all the tickets have gone. Tonight's dinner is being served in two seatings at the armory. Hundreds of people from Vancouver Island are flocking to the mainland this weekend to see musical legend Paul McCartney performing tonight in Vancouver. BC Ferries added some extra sailings to deal with the increased traffic, but one of the ships had mechanical problems, forcing delays. This is the Swartz Bay Terminal just after 2 this afternoon. Hundreds of cars patiently waiting for the vessel to be fixed. BC Ferry says the Queen of New Westminster was running 45 minutes late because of the mechanical problems.